Goodrich. The Straight Talk Tire People. My visit to Columbia really began in this room. A book full of pictures and a country I had never seen for all my years of traveling. Each page was arresting and vivid, but it was the magnificent Tekendama Falls that caught my fancy and held it, until its pictured splendor finally became a reality for me. But there is a beginning. Columbia, land of contrast, gateway to South America, the crossroads of two continents. As I planned my trip, I couldn't help noticing that the map of Columbia resembled a cornucopia, the Horn of Plenty. And as each vacation day unfolded, it seemed almost prophetic. Out of Columbia come most of the world's emeralds, vast stores of gold, silver, platinum, and petroleum. The national flower of the Republic is the orchid a very symbol of luxury. Columbia is easily accessible by a luxury liner and only a few hours away by air. As I watched from my window for a glimpse of the coast, the first sign appeared in the water, sharply and dramatically defined. The line where the blue Caribbean meets the muddy water of the mighty river of Columbia, the Magdalena. A few minutes flight upstream brings us to Barranquilla, the portal city of Colombia. The moment of arrival is always a thrill. I could hardly wait to stretch my legs in the warm Colombian sunshine. And it didn't take me long to take real advantage of it. Only minutes from Barranquilla is the sporty beach of Pratomar, famous for swimming, boating. The resort is popular with visitors and the leisure-loving Colombians alike. Barranquilla is bustling and cosmopolitan. More signs of progress and prosperity. The Bank of the Republic boasts architecture that is both contemporary and functional. I really felt at home when I saw this air-conditioned department store. This modern building is a factory for processing tobacco, another large export. Down on the docks, coffee is being loaded aboard ocean vessels bound for foreign ports all over the world. The Magdalena is the Mississippi of Colombia. So it shouldn't be a surprise to see an old Mississippi-type stern wheeler loaded with gay and festive passengers bound for upriver ports. The Magdalena, besides being a main cargo artery, provides interesting trips for tourists. And, strangely enough, much of the cargo is loaded on steel barges and nudged along in front of the steamer. A short distance eastward from Barranquilla, along the coast, is Santa Marta. Getting there in our little aero taxi plane is half the fun. Skimming low, we catch sight of a village built in the middle of a lake. This is the year-round home of these fishermen. We're still flying over the lowland, but our plane affords this magnificent view of the northernmost range of the Andes, the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Lofty and rugged, these snow-crowned peaks reign proudly over the verdant tropics below. In this land of contrast, 
one finds great banana plantations at the very foot of the Andes. We land our plane on a golf course. No trouble at all. No matter how they hang them at the corner market, bananas grow upside down. This giant spray machine protects the trees against harmful insects and disease. The beautiful harbor serves Santa Marta, the oldest city in Colombia. Nearby are many estates. This is San Pedro Alejandrino. Here, Simon Bolivar died in 1830. This monument immortalizes the liberator who fought for and won freedom for five South American republics, including Colombia. Nearing Cartagena, we sight La Popa, crowned with its ancient convent. La Popa has signaled the approach to Cartagena for centuries. The moats and thick walls guarded the renowned heroic city of the Spanish Main and made it the most powerful fortress in the Americas. Turreted sentry boxes stood against countless pirate attacks. Nearly 300 years were spent building these walls. The dungeons beneath the walls held political prisoners during colonial days. Fort San Felipe. What tides of world history have swirled about its proud and defiant ramparts? One good reason why Cartagena is Colombia's foremost tourist attraction is the beautiful Hotel del Caribe and its luxurious bathing beaches. Outside the old wall, the city reflects the quickened tempo of life today. But the heart and history of Cartagena really lie beyond the arches of the clock tower. Wait a minute. I want to get a picture of this policeman with a strange umbrella signal. Let's go on, through the arch to the plaza and to the narrow streets, balconies, and quaint peace of the inner city. The Inquisition House. What dark and tragic events must have taken place behind the sturdy studded doors. Pedro Claver Church stands in memory of a kind priest who devoted his life to better the lot of the slaves of Cartagena. We turn inland from the coast. Medellin is the first city on our picturesque trip to Cali and Pasto before visiting Bogota. I like comfort, and the Hotel Nutabara more than met my requirements. And what a sight greeted me from my window the next morning. Girls with skirts like exotic flowers in patterns on the lawn about the fountain. At luncheon, we were treated to a fashion show given by some young senoritas of Medellin wearing original Colombian fashions, pretty in the sun.
Medellin enjoys a constant spring-like climate. It has smart, modern downtown areas and broad shaded boulevards. The residential sections are some of the loveliest I've seen in Colombia. They range from colonial to ultra-modern. And speaking of homes, I've never seen anything like this. Shades of Egypt, the pharaohs would be green with envy. The Colombians are great sports enthusiasts. I couldn't leave Medellin without visiting the new stadium. The national game is football, soccer to us. I saw it played as it was meant to be played. And I don't mind telling you, I got just as excited as this avid crowd. Hey, watch that goal line. The same afternoon, I had time to go out to the famous racetrack. I lost no time in getting down to the paddock to look over the thoroughbreds. I guess I'll try my luck on the ninth. No matter which way they run, I lose. Getting out into the country, I discovered this finca, a state, as appealing as a little Swiss chalet. What luck that we stopped here. Colombia is called the land of orchids. See why? Around Medellin, you see some of the real Colombia. Here comes what looks like roundup time. Don't mistake this man for an ordinary cow puncher. He is an asandado, a wealthy rancher. Look at his bright clothes and notice the carriel bag on his hip. Further on, I visited a coffee plantation. The young bushes are carefully shaded to produce the famous quality and flavor of Colombian coffee. It takes 100 pounds of berries to produce 20 pounds of coffee. En route to the gold country, we again see below us the familiar Magdalena River boats. Farther on, we sighted this monster, dredging the river bottom for gold. This, I'll have you know, is not a piece of cheese, but $50,000 worth of unrefined gold. These nuggets were picked up at random hereabouts. Care to take a stroll? Another treasure of Colombia is the bargains in the fascinating shops where a peso goes a long, long way. Hand-fashioned brass stirrups or estribos, intricate baskets, sand blankets, bags with gaily woven flowers and straw. Anyone in the market for a stuffed alligator? I notice that men wear cariel bags. I'd like to take one home with me. These wandering Putumayan Indians with their solemn faces and shawl-like ruanas are here for market day. 
guess they haven't adopted the Cariel fashion yet. At last, a new Cariel bag. This leather artisan is working on the 10 pockets of the Cariel. These handsome bags were originally used by landowners to collect samples of coffee beans when inspecting their plantations. Almost too soon, we are airborne and on our way south to Cali. The lush Calca River Valley has spring. This river scene intrigued me. The lumber is bamboo, and down here, it has many uses. Even scaffolding for buildings like this. There's beauty everywhere in Cali. Crossing the bridge, here's a familiar sight. Cali has a quaint charm lent by the Spanish-type architecture, reminiscent of early California missions. Old haciendas dot the countryside. This one was the setting for a famous Colombian novel called La Maria. Around here, sugarcane is an important crop. I've never seen a cane field at close hand before, but believe me, I kept my distance when they started swinging those razor-sharp machetes. Before we started back for the hotel, I couldn't help pausing to watch the day's sweet golden harvest being drawn in heavy wagon loads to the mill. We arrive at the luxurious Alferez Real Hotel. What a delightful surprise to find this inviting pool of all places on the roof. No wonder it's a popular social spot all year round. You don't have to be in Colombia long to hear that Cali is famed for beautiful girls. Don't you agree? South of Cali, near the Ecuadorian border, just a few miles from the equator is the bleak mountainous region where many Indians live. It's like stepping into another world. It must be Blue Monday at this icy mountain stream. Life is primitive and hardy. The land is tilled for wheat, potatoes, and corn. But there's no particular season. Grain fields lie patterned in the sun waiting for the harvest. Harvest is the time for getting together and celebrating for the local fiesta. Farther down the valley, I finally saw for myself Las Lajas, the fabled church built on the side of a cliff. Each year, thousands of pilgrims come to this beautiful shrine seeking miraculous cures. At last, I arrived in Bogota, Colombia's capital. Off the highway near the airport, these grotesque and toothy figures greeted me. They are copies of prehistoric Indian statues found in San Augustine, far to the south. What a contrast between these ancient monuments and the modern monument to learning, the National University. Bogota is called the Athens of South America and has long been a center of learning and culture. As we approach the city, we're greeted by rows of charming flower stalls, reminiscent of Paris street vendors. This bouquet cost me only a few centavos. I had a look twice, but it's true. The apprentice policeman, nonchalantly directing traffic on Carrera Septima, is only a youngster. The heart of the city is the large plaza 
Bolivar, around which the original city was built. This cathedral is on the site of the first buildings in Bogota. Bogotanos enjoy their green parks. When business is slow, this lad philosophically reads El Tiempo. The Spanish exteriors of many churches hide the gleaming art treasures of centuries past. This unusual window is El Camarín del Carmen, a colonial architectural jewel. These smart stepping soldiers are part of the select presidential battalion, which guards the palace when the president is in residence. Astronomy is the oldest science, and here is the oldest observatory in the New World completed over a century and a half ago. Some of the ancient treasures are housed here in the National Museum. This austere stone building once served as a prison. The Bank of the Republic houses the famous Museum of Gold. These solid gold artifacts illustrate the exquisite craftsmanship of Indian artisans of the pre-Columbian era. Giant earrings and breastplates of war. Gold was plentiful and useful to the natives, who never dreamed of its value to the conquistadores. El Libertador. Everywhere I saw statues of Simon Bolivar, father of the Republic. This wall encloses his beautiful estate, shaded by stately trees. Quinta Bolivar, a national shrine. Colombia, too, has its battle monuments. Here I was standing at the very site of the Battle of Boyacá, where Bolivar defeated the Spanish and assured Colombian independence. From my hotel window, Bogota spreads out for miles along the base of the Andes and out into the great plain called the Sabana, a sparkling modern city. In Bogota, the contrast between the old and the new is striking. On all sides, there's evidence of progress. Everywhere, there's building going on. Standing watch over the city are two guardian mountains. Monserrate on the left with its gleaming white church. And on the right, a statue of Guadalupe spreads her arms in perpetual blessing. I chose a sunny Sunday afternoon to ride the blue inclined railway to the top of Monserrate. Aquel que no haya subido al cerro de Monserrate, aquel que no haya subido al cerro de Monserrate, no sabe lo que es canela ni tamara con chocolate, no sabe lo que es canela ni tamara con chocolate. Que me voy a morir, que me muero de amor, que me muero de amor, hurria, con las colombianas. Que me voy a morir, que me muero de amor, que me muero de amor, hurria, por las colombianas. It was built by Swiss engineers, and at times you travel at an 80 degree incline. Bogotanos make quite an outing of this breathtaking trip, taking the whole family in a picnic lunch. There's no end of surprises in Colombia. Who would ever think that on the outskirts of Bogota, there's a miniature Grand Canyon? At Lake Tota, Colombia's most beautiful lake, high in the Andes, I found what I had been looking for. I'd been wanting to try for some trout and got them. How's that for a few rainbows? The sun may be warm, but wait till you hit that water. It's really like ice. On the way back to Bogota, this old Spanish bridge is a visible link with Colombia's romantic past. Further along at Sipaquira, I came upon this extraordinary mountain. It's solid salt. 
And even more incredible, buried in its recesses is a full-size cathedral. Today, salt is mined just like coal. My visit to the famed Bogota Country Club was really a delight. Even though I was about to leave Colombia, and my vacation days were almost over. It was certainly something to tell the folks about back home. No trip would be complete without a bullfight. I was impressed by the brilliant spectacle and the grace of the matador. After dark, Colombian cities are exciting and gay. We had a final evening dancing at some of Bogota's cosmopolitan nightclubs. And so, a farewell to Colombia at the Tecandama Fall. Beautiful, spectacular, and untamed. The falls and the legends of romance that surround them will always remind me of Colombia, the country of mountains and valleys, of coasts and lowlands, of forests and mineral wealth, of every temperature and clime, a country of boundless possibilities and of the strangest conflict. This is the Republic of Colombia.